Well, this is fun. Hey guys, it's the day after I was in the emergency room now, and I apologize because it's been a couple days since I've made a video, so this is gonna be a little bit all over the place. We did have Thanksgiving. I had a really good time in Thanksgiving, all three of them. But, uh, so yeah, then the next day I was in the emergency room. So what happened? Um, so you remember a few days ago, I made that video about how I was experiencing heart palpitations and it was giving me a lot of anxiety. Well, so I uh, got to be yesterday, Friday, and I've been having heart palpitations for like five or six days at this point. On and off again only would happen for a few seconds, but then it would recur like a bunch of times in like an hour or something. And um, it was when I was laying down, I could feel it, blah, 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 blah. So, it, and I wasn't like dizzy. I wasn't short of breath. I didn't have any chest pain. So I knew that those were like the emergency symptoms of heart palpitations. So I'm like, okay, I'm like anxious or something. And, um, but it got to be five days and I was just like, okay, Maybe I should call my doctor and set up an appointment to talk about this. So I call up my regular doctor and I'm talking to the scheduler lady and she's like, okay, what do you want to come in for? And I was like, oh, well, I've been having some heart palpitations and I just, you know, I have a family history of heart problems. So I just want to come in and talk about that. And she was like, oh, okay. Um, let me grab a nurse on the line because I just want to make sure that you're okay to be scheduled. You know, and so the nurse got on the line and she was like listening to my symptoms and she's asking me all these questions about, uh, you know, are you dizzy? Are you short of breath? Do you have chest problems? No, I don't. And, um, and I was like, yeah, but I just have this like family history of heart problems. She's like, like what? And I said, well, uh, my father, uh, died of sudden heart failure when he was 42 years old. And she was like, oh, I see. So she was like, let me get this straight. So your father died in his 40s of sudden heart failure um from a genetic congenital heart defect and i was like yeah she was like and you have been having heart palpitations for five days and i was like uh-huh yep and she was like um okay dum dum i'm gonna need you to uh get out of bed and go to an urgent care right now because you need to be evaluated immediately we cannot wait until Monday to schedule this appointment. You need to go get this checked out like right fucking now. So naturally, I was a little bit anxious about this. Uh, I think it's funny that I've been talking about being a hypochondriac in my last couple of videos because I have such intense health paranoia. I do not. And my health is bad is the thing too. It's just I got all kinds of weird diseases. Like I that's a whole other video about all the weird health problems I've had. But yeah, so all of a sudden I'm like, oh, right. Because uh, yesterday was also the 18-year uh, anniversary of my dad just dropping dead one day of heart problems, right? Didn't even know he was sick. Just one day he was healthy, 42-year-old man. The next day he was dead. And ever since then, I've had really intense paranoia about my own health. And all of a sudden this doctor's like, you need to go in for an emergency EKG right now so we can figure out if you're dying or not. And I'm like, okay, so I, I didn't want to drive myself because I get really bad driving anxiety and like all of a sudden I'm just anxious as hell about my heart. So I'm like, what can I do? What can I do? And I just wound up taking the train a little bit, like one, a, a stop downtown and walking to the hospital because they have an urgent care there. And so I went to a hospital called HCMC and as I was checking in, they were like, nope, you go to the emergency room. And I'm like, okay. And uh, they took my uh, blood pressure super high because I was like super anxious. And um, I like talked to the intake nurse and they were like, okay. So I got myself an emergency uh, EKG. And then they took me back. They put me in a room and I had an emergency ECG, the EKG they put like sensors on you like all over like even on your feet and stuff and then they just like do the electric line reading of your heart right and then an ECG they actually take an ultrasound wand and like look at your heart and luckily for me 
I actually had one of my heart palpitations while they had the ultrasound wand on me, so I'm definitely not imagining it. Um, and then they they did like a bunch of blood tests. You can see my arms all still shitty from all the blood that they drew. I had an IV. It was so intense. And um, yeah, well, uh, long story short, my tests all came back normal. Um, the heart palpitations that I'm experiencing are not dangerous. And do you want to know what they think that it is? Hmm? The nicotine gum. They think that it's the nicotine gum. That I am just overdosing on nicotine. And I need to cool it with the nicotine gum. So, I, yeah, I've been chewing like 10 pieces a day for six months. And I just raised my dose from 2 milligrams to 4 milligrams. But, um, yeah, so basically... I was thinking about it, it's like I used to smoke like a pack a day and I've able I've been able to mostly quit smoking. I only smoke a couple days a month. Um and I think that the way that I was able to do it is that you can only smoke so many cigarettes. You have to go outside to do it. They make you feel sick, so you really can't chain smoke all day. I couldn't eat anyway. And but with the nicotine gum, you can chew the gum all the time. So I think that what I've done is that I've quit smoking cigarettes by becoming more addicted to the gum, which gives me way more nicotine than I was ever getting from the cigarettes. So yeah, I have to take my nicotine and my alcohol and my caffeine consumption down to reasonable levels, but I'm not going to die of a heart attack just yet. So that's my story. Thank you for watching my channel. Okay, bye. See you next time. Now enjoy these clips of my family Thanksgiving. It's my brother-in-law Tony cutting the turkey, and over here we have my sister Katie making gravy. Making gravy. We have stuffing. We have mashed potatoes. We have corn. It's all traditional. Very good. So cute. You're being so cute. Charlie. Hi! Oh. Now, one thing about my sister's house is that she has a giant pig that lives in her house with her. This is Daisy. Oh, and that's Maggie. And yeah. I'm a, personally, I'm afraid of the pig. So I don't get any closer to it than that. The dogs don't seem to give a shit. <laughs> it's so hard to beat. A toddler. <laughs> oh, look at eyes. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sweetie. You can record this video. <laughs> very good. That's very good, darling. Now that's content. Second Thanksgiving. I'm filming, sorry. That's my mom. Uh, that's my Uncle Steve and my cousin Dan. And that's my Aunt Kathy. You didn't see me. Hi. Oh, <laughs> it's a good shot. Whoa, that, that is amazing. That We're learning about nuts. It's a rather particular, yeah, it's a rather particular tree, um, I have to say. I only want the bombas, Polly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't even say that. The stains off of Third Thanksgiving. Without damaging the mat. Like, it didn't take them off completely, but it drastically, drastically reduced them. Ah, beer. I need the beer. So am I driving, huh? What? <laughs> what?